This week on the Computer Chronicles, computers and senior citizens. Older Americans are now turning to computers to improve the quality of their lives. Maybe a PC and the right software would be good for your parents or grandparents. We'll show you the most popular software for seniors, programs to plan trips, programs to plan estates, and software that helps you trace your family roots. We'll visit a senior center where retired folks are learning to use the internet. We'll explore SeniorNet, an online service especially for older Americans. Also, Internet Tips, this week's Computer News, and My Pick of the Week, all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding provided by the Software Publishers Association, presenters of the CODES, the annual Excellence in Software Awards. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Sometimes we get the impression that only young guys use computers. Well, that's not really true, of course. But what may surprise you is that one of the fastest growing groups of new computer users are senior citizens. Now, one good thing about getting older and retiring is that you have the time, maybe even the money, to travel. And one of the most popular software categories for seniors is trip planning software. One of the best in that category is TripMaker from Rand McNally New Media. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Okay, let's say my parents are in Chicago, and they've always wanted to come out west of California, okay. and they're planning a trip. How would they use the software to help them do that? Okay, well, let's get started and take a look at the Explore Guide that... The Explorer Guide helps you investigate locations and find interesting things to do. We focused on ease of use. You can see the and hear the audio here. Even help you select a destination. All right, so we're going to pick a place to go to, and I said California, Nevada. Let's go ahead and select California, Nevada. These are all the trip types, interesting attractions that you might see by category. So if they're interested in particular things to do once they get there, they can customize the, the trip planning? Yes, they can, by their interests. So they would like a heritage type stuff. Let's select heritage. They might be interested in camping, boating, okay. and fishing. Let's run down through the, through the list here, maybe urban attractions okay. in different cities. And let's also select vacation cities. Okay. Here you so set the calendar, the time that you want to take your trip. Mm -hmm. Here's the fun. And here you have all those attractions that meet the uh, so criteria. So these are the areas they might want to visit once they come out here, like L.A., for example, it would be a city. And so what, what would the program tell me about what to do when choice. they get to L.A.? What you can do is find a, a narrative as well as a lookout, which is a mm -hmm. new feature that we've added to the software this year. And with the lookout, you bring up a panoramic image of Los Angeles. You can zoom around that image. There, mm. there are hot spots that allow you to go in and click on various locations and find out more so about It does more than Los just buying the book on L.A., for example, because it has all these interactive elements to it. Yes, yeah, so you get a real feel for Los Angeles and what there is to do there and what there right, is now to I see. know they don't really care that much about the city. They want to do the Carmel, Monterey, gorgeous California bit. So how, how would I help them with this? Thing? Okay, the software can help you out there as well. Let's go down and select Carmel. Uh -huh. And once you come into Carmel, you have a video of that area you can play and learn the more about it. miles of California's central coast called Big Sur offer one of the most spectacular right, driving this experiences out of a book. in the state. All right, now, how do they actually figure out how to get there? Suppose they're going to drive. Does this help them plan the route and that kind of stuff, too? Sure. From here, you can go ahead and set destination, and we'll set Carmel as a destination. Mm -hmm. Go into the trip guide, and we're going from Chicago right. to Carmel. So at this point, we'll go ahead and calculate our trip. Okay, and what does it mean to calculate the trip? That means we'll identify the best route for you to take in between Chicago and Carmel, and also bring up detailed itinerary on the left, a map on the right, and then a trip summary. So stuff to do on the way, Yeah. how to get there, where to make the lefts and the rights and all exactly. that stuff. Exactly. You can go ahead and look at the attractions and mm. identify all those 
on your route that you might be interested in stopping by to see. And you can print this information out and take it with you on your trip. All right, now, so if they're coming to Carmel, they're probably going to drive up to San Francisco also. Can they actually get, like, a city map so they can figure out how to get to my house or stuff like that? Sure they can. Let's go and take a look at San Francisco and go down and select inset maps. We have 240 inset maps which have detailed street level information mm -hmm. for many of the large cities in, in North America. All right, yeah, that's it. So they can really get, and you could even zoom in more than that and actually see streets. Yeah. You can see streets, that's you great. can print this out. And, and I can print that well. out too. Sure. All right, so it's Trip Maker from Rand McNally. Thanks very much, Thank Michael. Thank you, Stuart. All right, how do seniors become computer savvy in the first place? Well, they take classes. In fact, one of the most popular courses at the Willows Senior Center in San Jose, California, is the one on computers. The Willows Senior Center in San Jose, California, is a beehive of activity on almost any day of the week. Young or old, there are clubs and classes for every stripe, from chess to sewing to line dancing. The center also organizes trips and excursions and offers social and legal services. But some of the most popular classes by far are the computer classes, which are usually filled to capacity. Since they were introduced in early 1994, the number of classes has quadrupled, and the Willow Center is now also a teaching site for SeniorNet, the online group for computing seniors. We've had some students that when they first came into the class, they, you know, they really had no idea what a computer was. and you know, really uh, kind of afraid to, to fool with the mouse. And, and now those same individuals are helping coach and, and, uh, and teaching some of the classes. So it's, you know, it's kind of surprising where, you know, that you see the development of the people. Uh, some of their attitudes are, are changing. Students have different reasons for attending the computer classes. Some want to log on to make new friends or to take advantage of online resources that don't require leaving the house. Other senior students have loftier goals. I would like to find a part-time job using a computer. I felt that I didn't have any confidence in, in trying to even try it, and after I came, I found out it wasn't that difficult. I don't think there is a, um, um, an age limit with computers like there are on some jobs. I feel that you could either work at home or, or work through agencies for people that need you to enter data for them, that sort of thing. You know, there's the myth that seniors can't change, but, you know, that's not the case. It's, you know, it's been proven that, you know, that with the classes that we offer here as well as other programs throughout the, you know, the, throughout the nation that, the, you know, seniors do learn and, and can, uh, you know, improve their lives. And so, I, you know, I think that's one of the benefits of the Senior Net program. Whatever the goal, age should not be a barrier to taking those first halting steps at learning something new, whether it's moving your feet or moving the cursor. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Well, when you're young, you think you'll live forever, but when those aches and pains start creeping in, you know it's time to think about the future. If you're smart, that means estate planning and thinking about making a will. One easy and expensive way to do that is to use something like Willmaker from Nolo Press. And Albin's here to show us Willmaker. First of all, what are the, there are actually more than just a will you can do with Willmaker, right? Yeah, Willmaker makes three different documents, a will, uh, healthcare directions, also known as a living will, mm -hmm. and also a document called uh, final arrangements where you can set out whatever arrangements you've made for your funeral or right. cremation or whatever. All right, let's focus on making the will right now. And suppose I'm just starting from scratch. I've decided, yeah, I should start thinking about making a will. How do I use the software to begin that process? Well, you, you get it out of the box, install it, and you get oriented here. And the first thing you do is you create a new portfolio. Okay, so... And so let's uh, click there, and we'll enter our name, okay. Joe... Smith. So it's really a dialogue, a series of questions that the software will ask me? Yeah, and then we come to our first menu here of the three different documents you want to create. Okay, so, so we're working each, on the will. Each one of these is a uh, interview, and it starts you out. It always orients you to the task you're about to do, and uh, then gets you into the actual mm -hmm. meat of the issue, which is answering the questions. It starts out with your name. Some questions are optional here, and 
It does work in all states except Louisiana. So it's smart enough to know that the laws might be different in my state compared right. to some other state. There's a few things that might be different. Yeah. All right, let's go to one you've already started so we can get to the more meaty parts of, of the software. All right, we'll look at the portfolio of Ezra Jones here. And uh, he's already completed his will. Mm -hmm. So if he enters the will interview, he goes straight to the review screen here. So it's easy to go back and change things once you've made your Absolutely. will? Absolutely. That's one of the best things about will makers. You can change your mind and change things okay. whenever you want to. Well, here's uh, some of the things you do in your will. If you go through the whole interview, you'll cover all of these topics. And specific bequests is one of the things people most want to do is uh, decide specifically who gets Give specific things to specific people. Specific people. Certain sentimental things sometimes. Okay. So in this case, Ezra Jones has uh, so Danny to, is a beneficiary. Danny is, a, say, his uh, nephew, and he wants Danny to get his famous baseball uh -huh. card collection, which also happens to be quite valuable because it has Babe Ruth's rookie right. card or something. <laughs> and you get to name alternates for Danny in case uh, Danny doesn't survive you. All right, so that's an example of how you'd make specific requests. Another important thing to do in a will is to set up property management for any beneficiaries who are, might be young when they mm -hmm. receive the property. So let's say this baseball card collection is worth $10,000. You don't want Danny squandering it right. <laughs> for bubblegum. So here we can set up property management for Danny Jones. And Willmaker offers you two different property management options. Here's an example where you might want to use the online legal help to, to have these options so more fully So it's telling explained. me something about this uniform transfers to minors act, right. which I don't know anything about. What's that? And, you're and I can look it up. And you're being asked to choose between yeah. the two, so we give you a choice between, mm -hmm. we give you an explanation of that. Plus, we refer you to our extensive legal manual, exactly what chapter and section, where you can find more information about that. All right, so when I'm all done, I can just actually click print, basically, and it prints out a legal, real will. Absolutely. When you're all done, you click display print. It takes a few minutes to, seconds to assemble, uh -huh. and, and here you are. And it also produces important uh, instructions on how to Yeah, what sign about like book. witnesses and how you're supposed to sign it? That tells you all of that, too. The instruction page does that, and at the bottom of every page, there's a place for you and your witnesses to initial it. Uh, last question. Is this really as good, as legal, as valid as spending a lot of money going to a lawyer? For most people, a uh, will is a very simple document, and if you can do your taxes on a computer, you can definitely do your will on a computer. All right. Thanks very much, Alvin. All right. As we saw earlier at the Willows Senior Center in San Jose, Senior Net has become one of the most popular cyber sites for senior citizens. Next, we're going to look at two retired people whose lives have really changed thanks to SeniorNet. Dr. Bin Budai is a retired physician who loves to collect books. He is also an accomplished poet and writer. When he retired, he decided to learn about computers so as to catalog his book collection. He has yet to do that, but in the meantime, he has become an accomplished PC user. He writes and prints his poems on the PC and is a member of SeniorNet, which he uses to keep in touch with the outside world from the comfort of his armchair. You know, as we get older, we become limited. You know, our, our, our knees talk back to us. Uh, we lose our hearing, our, our vision gets dim, uh, the color in our hair goes down the drain. So it's harder to get out to go to movies, plays, movies, things like that. But with the computer, the telecommunication, the world can come to you. Dr. Budai has other interests besides SeniorNet, and he has learned to enjoy the free time that retirement offers. He logs on to SeniorNet and visits conferences, checks for messages, and sends poems across cyberspace. But he realizes that it's not always easy to introduce new technology to retired seniors. People who, during their lifetime, have been able to see new things, and accept it will be able to accept the computer. People who have been very constricted in their life will never be able to take the computer. Before they retired, Jenny and Hans Kolmar worked as theatrical press agents. They have boxes filled with signed photos of the best known entertainers of the golden age of Hollywood. Their press releases were pasted up from typed and retyped pages without the help of word processing. When Jenny Colmar was a teenager, she began a list of things she wanted to accomplish, and learning a PC became one of them. I was always too busy to learn to compute, and it was kind of on the agenda of things to do before I die. You know, I've seen the strip show. <laughs> that was on my list. I threw away learning to fly. I decided I didn't really have to do that. 
before I died. But the, I had a whole list at the age of 18 that kept growing as I grew older. And the last 10 years or so, it was learn how to use a computer. It took Jenny six months to get online, but once she understood the basics of computer input and output, she was hooked and is now a regular user of SeniorNet. But Jenny soon learned that it was just as easy to become an online addict. It really is a siren song. You can be lured into all this to the exclusion of all else. And I think that's one of the dangers. I'm always preaching to these people online, not to get a life, but to honor the life you have already and add to it with being online. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. There's something special about a three or four generation family. You have a sense of continuity and family history and tradition. And one way to really focus on your family roots is with a program like Family Tree Maker from Banner Blue. And Claire is here to show that to us. All right, we've got Family Tree Maker running. Uh, show me how I would start to build a family tree. You've got somebody up here named, named Ken right now, and, and he's the person who's starting. Right. When you make your family tree, you're going to go in and put information on your relatives their name, when they were born, where they were born, um, if they've died, when and where. So you start with text and stuff you know, basically. Right. All right so what are we looking at? So we're looking at here, um, this is one generation, the husband and wife and their daughter. And if you want to look at, for instance, his parents, we just click on the side tabs and go, and here's all the information on his parents. Uh -huh. And then these are his siblings down here and the children. So yeah. each of those tabs we would create, again, to represent me and my wife and my kids and my brothers and so on. Exactly. And then in addition to just the names and dates, you can also put in facts like education mm -hmm. or occupation, um, address information if you want to make labels for holiday cards, mm -hmm. medical information. So you can put all kinds of, of tidbits about a person's life. All right. Now, besides the text, you can actually put multimedia elements in there, right. too, like pictures and even video clips, right? Right. This is one of the exciting features, the multimedia scrapbook, because there's a lot more to your history than just the names and dates. Okay, here we go. Come on. <laughs> so I could take a camcorder clip if I have a video capture board in my PC and just plug it in and then transfer that video to my hard drive and make it part of this file. Right, exactly. That is really cool. Exactly. Or the others are still photos, or are they video clips also? These others are photos, and you can put photos in using either a photo CD, or you can scan them and put them in as a graphic file. All right, Claire, one of the amazing things about the software is you can actually go back and find ancestors right. you may not know even existed, and, and we sort of set, set that up to do it in my case, for example. So right. show me how you would do that. I want to go find information about my father, my grandfather, etc. Right. What we do, this is called the Family Finder Index. It's an index of 115 million individuals, and it references everything from Social Security records to death to uh, land yeah. records. So here we've entered in the name Shafe, and we came up with David and Paul. Which is my father and grandfather. Is your in father fact. and grandfather. Yeah. Okay, so what do we do after we find the names? So once you find the names, then you can get the CD that contains so the right So it's records. the index that's on that CD, and exactly. then I pull... Now, now, where are these records coming from? These records, this particular one we're looking at is Social Security death benefits records. We also have census records from the mm -hmm. 1800s. We have land records, marriage records. So um, you use the index to tell you which records have information on uh -huh. your family. And then here we go, David wow. Chaffee. And you actually have dates of birth, dates of death, social mm -hmm. security numbers. So you can really go back and find people you didn't even know existed and find right. more information about right. them. Oh, that is really cool. Okay, Family Tree Maker. All right, now we've seen what you can do with Family Tree Maker. Let's go over now and visit Jane Cronin. And we're going to see what she did with the software. Jane, you're from San Jose here in California. Yes. And you used Family Tree Maker to build your own family tree? Yes, I did. Okay, so uh, now who's Michael? That's my husband. Uh huh. So show us what you, what you did here. Okay, um, uh, first I'll show you the ancestral chart, the ancestral tree. And this is me and my parents huh. and my grandparents. And you scanned in those photos and that you scanned had. Scanned in the photos and then um, was able to print out this lovely oh, printout. Oh, that is so nice. So you can actually nice? print this stuff out just like that and hand this out to your relatives or show it to other people or right. something. 
Okay, now you can also do something called the descendant chart, which right. is really to see the bigger family tree, the I guess. The relationship. Huh? Right, the so family members. And here is um, the uh, Yeah, zoom the out so we chart. can kind of see the whole tree there. Okay. So these are, the, these are your father's descendants, huh? Yes. Wow. And this is my family. Wow, there we go. And then we can zoom in so that we can read them more clearly. All right, now there's another neat feature in here called kinship, in which you can really put together a list of all the relatives you have. Is that right. it? Show me that this one. This is the kinship chart. Let's bring it up a little more. Okay, and so this is every rel relative you can in think of right. in your family. Going way back um, wow. seven generations on one side and six generations mm. on the other side. And this shows you the relationship um, Brown, William Wallace, great-grandfather yeah. of the wife. Wow. And, and how long did it take you to do all this? I've been um, doing genealogy um, for about a year. Wow. And um, I've been taking the class at the Willow Center. Uh -huh. And uh, so I've been collecting. Great fun doing oh, this, it's huh? been wonderful. I've been collecting all my little notes here and there and the important papers that I have at home and putting the information in here. And I've gone to several different libraries. That's great. Yeah. All right, so it's Family Tree Maker and it's from Banner Blue Software. All right, as we've seen before, the Internet and the online services can provide a real sense of community and friendship for many senior citizens who are otherwise all alone. In this week's Net News, we'll focus on cyber sites that are geared to the special needs of older Americans. Thanks, Stuart. I know we're hearing a lot about Senior Net today, but I think it's important to see their website because it's a very well-organized uh, collection of information, and they've got some nice uh, graphics, as you can see. As I scroll down the page, you see we can learn about the organization. We can learn about uh, some of the classes that they teach. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and you'll see they have Internet Resources in Aging. Now, this is a collection of links to other sites on the uh, web where that might be of interest. Now, if you're on an online service, you probably only use email. I know that's what I spend most of my time doing. But uh, there is a wealth of information buried under some of these things. Personal finance section, if you've got some money you want to invest. Uh, but I think even more fun is the travel section. I'm going to go directly to the cruise critic. This is almost as good as having Bruce Williams right there by your side to tell you about and review different cruises, as well as allow you to make reservations. Now, some of the most uh, relevant and important information I've ever read on the Internet was written by some of our senior citizens. So if you are a senior citizen and you are not uh, online, not with email, and you don't know how to c use a computer, please go out, learn to use a computer, get online, because you'll have a lot of fun and we need you. Now time for our weekly summary of what's new in the field of personal computing. Let's go to Studio E for this week's Computer News with Lori. In the random access file this week, both MCI and AT&T are now offering internet access to their long distance customers. The two phone companies are offering five free hours of net access per month or unlimited access for $19.95 per month. MCI said it would triple the capacity of its internet backbone to support the additional traffic. The House of Representatives is considering a new bill to limit the effect of the new telecommunications deregulation law which prohibits indecent material on the Internet. The new language would restrict only material which is, quote, harmful to minors. You may soon be sending Mother's Day cards on the Internet. Hallmark and Microsoft have reached agreement to jointly develop a standard for sending electronic greeting cards, complete with color graphics and possibly even animation. A federal court has upheld the right of employers to read emails sent by employees over company email systems. The case arose after Pillsbury fired an employee who had used email messages to criticize managers in what was deemed an inappropriate manner. Add Novell to the list of Java licensees. The company says it will soon offer the Java development platform as part of NetWare, enabling customers to develop Java applications for Internet and intranet use. Hewlett Packard and cell phone maker Nokia have teamed up to introduce the first ever palm top mobile business device. The Omnigo 700 LX is essentially an HP 200 LX palm top computer coupled with a Nokia cellular phone. The result is a complete wireless mobile workstation which lets you do email, send faxes, make phone calls or run common business applications. The Omnigo 700 is being released first in Europe. 
Apple has unveiled another upgrade to its Newton PDA. The new MessagePad 130 has more memory, built-in internet capability, improved multitasking, and a backlit screen. iOmega says it will soon be bundling its popular zip drives in several desktop PCs. Hewlett Packard and Micron have made deals to use the zip drives in selected PC models. And in Europe, ESCOM has also signed up to offer an internal zip drive in its computers. For senior citizens interested in getting into computers, Osborne McGraw-Hill has just released Young at Heart, Computing for Seniors, a new book aimed specifically at helping older adults get up to speed with computers, software, and the Internet. The book is co-authored by Mary Furlong, founder of SeniorNet. And finally, websites are getting more and more like TV, including Nielsen ratings. The ratings are actually done by a company called NPD and automatically track web usage in selected metered homes. The first ratings were done in January and showed AOL as the most popular website, followed by Webcrawler, Netscape, Yahoo, and InfoSeq. That's it for this week's Random Access. Back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. I really love software that creates a whole new world and lets you do things you could have never done before without a computer. Well, Widget Workshop from Maxis is such a program. It's an interdepartmental science lab that is just really fun and very educational. Widget Workshop lets you build widgets, which are really scientific experiments in electricity, computers, biology, math, physics, and so on. Widget Workshop comes with a huge toolkit that makes it easy to construct wild Rube Goldberg type contraptions that follow the real laws of science. It's somewhat like the incredible machine, only it's not just a game. It is a serious and powerful educational tool. What's really cool about Widget Workshop's virtual lab is that you can create things you could never create in a real lab. This program is fun and a must for kids who like science. Widget Workshop from Maxis. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with another half hour of the latest in personal computer technology. I'm Stuart Chaffee. See you here next time. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding provided by the Software Publishers Association, presenters of the Codies, the annual Excellence in Software Awards. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com.